Welcome to BioLearner. This video is about energy and life. Life is about energy. Getting it, holding on to it, using it, and inevitably losing it. Life is also about matter, the physical stuff that living things are made of. In biology, matter is often called structure. Structure can refer to the stuff you can see, such as leaves on a tree or the parts of your body. Or structure can refer to the stuff you can't see, biological molecules such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And that's where most of the action is. So living things have to get both energy and matter in order to stay alive. As you have probably heard before, energy and matter cannot be created or destroyed. Living things simply move them around, store them, and convert them to more useful forms. In the case of energy, there are forms such as light energy, heat energy, kinetic energy, and chemical energy. In the case of matter, living things are made up of small molecules and bigger molecules, most of which contain carbon. These molecules are used to build cells, and cells of different types make up entire organisms. So how do living things get energy? Most of the energy for life on this planet comes from the sun in the form of light energy. Now, of course, animals like you and I cannot use light energy directly. I can't get energy in my body just from standing in the sunlight. Fortunately, there are amazing organisms on Earth called producers. Producers can capture light energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy. That is, energy that's stored inside the chemical bonds of molecules. For example, plants can perform the process of photosynthesis, in which they convert light energy from the sun into chemical energy by storing it in molecules of glucose. Glucose is a type of sugar, represented by this pentagon. Glucose is the most basic food of life. Like any food you eat, it contains both energy and matter. Energy from the sunlight, matter, especially carbon, from carbon dioxide, and some water. Once plants have made glucose through photosynthesis, the plants can do two things with it. They can use the molecules of glucose to build other molecules, or in other words, structure. For example, the plant can build new cells, longer roots, more leaves. In other words, the plant can grow. The second thing that plants can do with glucose is to break the molecules apart in order to get the chemical energy that is stored in the chemical bonds. This process is called respiration. Respiration is the way that most organisms release the energy stored in biological molecules so that they can use it to stay alive. Now, once plants have made all this valuable food, other living things will want to get it too. Consumers, like animals, will come along and eat parts of the plant. Like plants, animals can then use the molecules from the food they eat both as a source of matter to build their own structure or as a source of energy by breaking down the molecules through the process of respiration to get the energy that is stored in the chemical bonds. Eventually, all living things will die. When organisms die, do they still contain energy? Yes. Dead things are filled with molecules that contain useful energy and matter. Decomposers, such as bacteria and fungi, break down dead things to get their molecules. And just like plants and animals, the decomposers can use the molecules from the dead things to build their own structures or break down the molecules, usually through the process of respiration, in order to get the energy that is stored inside. Now, it's time for a little vocabulary. Producers, such as plants, are also called autotrophs because they can make their own food. Organisms that cannot make their own food and therefore must get food from other organisms are called heterotrophs. Heterotrophs include consumers, which get food from living things, as well as decomposers, which get food from dead things. Both consumers and decomposers most commonly use the process of respiration 
to break apart food molecules and get the energy that is stored inside. Do plants do respiration? Yes, this is an important point. Photosynthesis stores chemical energy in molecules of glucose. Respiration breaks down glucose and other food molecules to make the chemical energy available for use. When plants make glucose by photosynthesis, it's like putting food in the fridge. The energy is still trapped inside the molecules of glucose. In order to get the energy, the plants have to eat the food. That is, they have to break apart the chemical bonds through the process of respiration. Only then can plants use the energy that they have stored. The processes of photosynthesis and respiration are part of an organism's metabolism. Metabolism refers to all of the chemical processes that living things use to build up and break down molecules, as well as to store, transfer, and use energy. When we say that a person has a fast metabolism, or talk about burning calories, we are actually referring to the process of respiration. Our cells break down food molecules in order to release energy that is stored in the chemical bonds. One final and very important point. All of these processes are inefficient, meaning that the energy is not perfectly transferred from one place to another. For example, much of the energy released from food molecules during respiration is lost as heat. This is true for producers, for consumers, and for decomposers. As a result, organisms store and use only a small percentage of the energy that is in the food that they eat. And as organisms decompose, eventually all of their energy is lost, at least to the world of living things. Therefore, life on this planet depends on a constant supply of energy from the sun. That's it for now. Thanks for watching BioLearner. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. For more information about BioLearner videos and tutoring services, go to my website, biolearner.com, or send me an email at biolearner at gmail.com. Bye-bye.